is the country coordinator for Lebanon at IAEA. Mr. Ibrahim Durani, please. Yes. Start. Uh, good, good afternoon to you and happy Medical Physics Day to all of you. And thank you for the introduction and for the invitation. Also, before I start, I would like also to uh, congratulate Dr. Mohamed Basim for this uh, uh, enormous uh, yeah, job in creating and uh, improving the medical physics uh, program in Pakistan. This is a very good job. I would like to share my screen and okay. Can you see my screen? Yes, so we can see your screen. Okay. So I will I will move here in 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 this and uh, talk about uh, the occasion, the International Day of Medical Physics for 2022. And as uh, you, you mentioned, our theme for this year is medical physics for sustainable healthcare. And as you may know that each year we have, we chose a, a, a theme that majorly uh, depicts what is medical physicist duties and responsibilities. And uh, before that, I would like to mention about the IOMP, the International Organization of Medical Physics. And I'm glad uh, to hear from Dr. Mohammed that they are, uh, uh, they are organizing or they are collaborating with IEA and also, I would like to uh, invite uh, you and uh, the Pakistan Medical Physics Society to be also uh, uh, relying or uh, having some uh, assistance from the IOMP because we do also assist countries and promote medical physics worldwide. We are having six regional organizations, uh, namely the European Federation, the Asian, the Latin American, the South Asian and uh, the African and the Middle East federations. These are the major six uh, uh, regional organizations of uh, IOMP. We have uh, around 89 national organizations or countries are registered under IOMP and I believe Pakistan is one of them. Uh, also, so uh, there are more than 27,000 medical physicists worldwide that adhere to IOMP activities and IOMP uh, leadership. What we do as uh, International Organization of Medical Physics, we have a lot of scientific events, we have publications, we have uh, education provisions, we have also series in radiation protection, we do some accreditations of programs, and we have uh, award and honors pioneer in medical physics worldwide, we have publications, International Medical Physics World. We have newsletters, and we also uh, uh, encounter or we adopt the International Day of Medical Physics. Uh, now it is the 10th year uh, celebrating this day. And we had a, a long uh, you know, uh, pathway to uh, be recognized as medical physics with the International uh, Labor Organization. Now we are considered a, a, a profession, a medical or health profession uh, under the ILA. So uh, the IOP newsletter has been uh, developed and has been uh, seen by many people around the world. The webinars, especially after the COVID-19, uh, we have a lot of uh, webinars series that we do almost every month we have, and you can see that in our website. Uh, we have two major global conferences and scientific meetings, the IUPASM World Congress, and lately was in Singapore uh, after we uh, having uh, virtual meetings. And also we have international conference on medical physics. Also, this is a, a, a big event that we uh, in, encourage everybody to participate. The IOMP Council now consists of the President, Vice President, Immediate Past President, uh, Secretary, and the Treasurer. And these are our social media and contacts. And if you need other information, please go to IOMP.org 
for that purpose. Going back to the uh, International Day of Medical Physics, uh, the celebration, uh, we usually have a contest uh, to send uh, to all medical physicists, societies, and individuals to uh, uh, propose a poster uh, after we uh, initiate the theme. And this poster was uh, won by a, done by a, a student in, from Malaysia. And uh, it depicts actually what is a medical physics as a sustainable, for sustainable healthcare. And uh, you can see that these are the aim and goals that has been used worldwide uh, in many of uh, you know organizations. And we picked eight uh, you know responsibilities and duties of a medical physicist, or a what should the medical physicist be uh, responsible or duty to adhere to? Uh, first of all, uh, education, uh, implementation, data science, research. And this is what you know. Uh, uh, Dr. Muhammad notes that a physicist should should use data science, statistic analysis to read reports and to uh, you know uh, initiate reports for the uh, in in the profession. Uh, innovation, technology, health improvement, artificial intelligence, and the Internet of Things support these main three eight responsibilities and duties of any medical physics should be applied so that we will have a good health and well-being. I will go uh, briefly uh, give an example of each, uh, you know, category so that, you know, uh, our students or uh, people who are interested in medical physics should be aware of what is this profession and what is the responsibility and the duties that to have. First of all, the education as um, there are many pathways into medical physics and these are i, I put uh, you know some of the pathways so all they will go to a practicing medical physics uh, which will be uh, you know ready for doing uh, the, uh, the the clinical work in a hospital setting or in industrial setting or even in in any uh, you know field of of medical physics uh, the second of all, implementation, and this is an example of implementing, you know, the duties uh, in a radiation therapy department, for example, and also the medical physicist will be responsible in establishing this process, enhancing the process, maybe, and also developing a new uh, techniques in the treatment. Uh, the third thing is to, to get uh, data science, which is to... Uh, uh, analyze and uh, be able to use data from, you know, uh, spreadsheets, from tables, and to make sure of these data are accurate and correct. Uh, fourth uh, aspect is research. Research um, medical physicists are involved in in research, especially research for uh, the, this example of radio labeled antibodies. That is a, a recent research in, in uh, linking some antibodies to tumor cells, so it will be easy to destroy them by radiation or by an, uh, other means. Innovation. Innovation is one of the aspects of medical physics, especially when they are uh, practicing on, on, in, in the job to have or to uh, look for better treatments. You always, when you do planning, you always uh, you, you, you cannot put a, a time for each plan. For example, if you spend one hour doing a planning, if you spend two hours, I think you will have a better plan. And you, if you spend three, four hours in certain plans, your plan will be developed and will be better uh, you know, as you go forward. Uh, technology, of course. Technology is an important aspect of our profession. These are our tools, we say. We, 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 as a medical physicist, we have tools, and this uh, technology is our tools, uh, starting from the machines. You know, the, you have um, uh, Linux with the multiple, you know, uh, uh, technologies in the Linux advancement, and I will uh, talk a bit in details about the uh, new you know, trends in radiation therapy, you know, um, the, um, for example, the HDR, the cyclotron, the proton therapy, MRI Linux, um, the uh, 
uh, gamma knife and the uh, uh, cyber knife, all these machines will promote our profession for the better health of the patients. Number seven is health improvement. And this is what our aim to do. We will uh, aim, you know, with the team, uh, of course, with the radiation oncologist, if we are talking about the radiotherapy or with the radiologist uh, or the nuclear medicine physician and the uh, other team, the technicians and the team that work in these fields to work side by side to improve the health of our patients and make sure that the uh, patients are receiving the best health uh, the best the best treatment with the minimum uh, side effects and finally we cannot live without the era of the uh, you know uh, artificial inten intelligence and the internet of things now we are all comply you know relying on uh, technology networking mobile phones you know all these uh, should be also integrated in our profession and it is while you are establishing a department in medical in radiation therapy or uh, diagnostic radiology or nuclear medicine you have to have a, a full network of uh, you know collaborating and uh, between different machines and different platforms of software these are all should be available so that now we have telemedicine for example a, a doctor from x country can see a, a, and read a radiology report or uh, images from a country which is far distant uh, from, from uh, them. So this is a technology where we can use the artificial intelligence example here uh, in, in uh, planning, for example. A lot of now softwares, they can do the contouring for you. They can uh, give you optimization of a plans and then they give you an output. Of course, we will not rely 100% on artificial intelligence because otherwise we will not be uh, working we can guide you know artificial intelligence or use the artificial intelligence to the benefit of the patients so all this uh, you know eight uh, uh, duties and responsibilities or let's say categories will give a good health and well-being for our patients and uh, make sure that we will do our best to give you know, the patients the uh, proper treatment and diagnosis so that uh, you know, we will have a patient uh, free from diseases. In the second part of my uh, talk, I will, probably it is uh, directed to the students or the people who, who are interested in medical physics who want to uh, study or in, be involved in medical physics program. So what are they expecting? So uh, for example, I took the, uh, you know, the radiation therapy aspect, which is uh, mainly most of the medical physicists work in this, uh, you know, uh, category, radiation therapy treatment. And this uh, slide gives you the um, the uh, types of radiation therapy that uh, the medical physicists should be involved or should be aware of. Uh, let's say for 3D confirmal, uh, this is the um, uh, treatment modality where we can confirm the treatment or the radiation dose to the tumor. Uh, the IMRT, the intensity modulated radiation therapy, which we use more beams into a uh, to to conform highly to the uh, tumor and make sure the uh, organ at risk will be saved. The IGRT, the image guided radiation therapy now, a lot of machines, they have integrated imaging uh, modalities in, in the machine because it, it, the best thing to treat is to see the tumor before you treat. So uh, imaging is an essential part of the treatment and many of the uh, new technologies are incorporating different imaging modalities uh, into the, the scene. Uh, stereotactic body radiation therapy, and this is a confined radiation therapy to minimize you know, the, the treatment times instead of you know, the patient coming for 30 sessions, they could be done in, in five concentrated sessions. And again, you can see the, uh, the uh, importance of uh, uh, you know, saving the organs at risk around the tumor. The stereotactic radiosurgery, which is also an innovative technique, 
done for one session, one high, uh, highly dosed session, especially in the, in the tumor of the brain. And also this is, uh, could be done for uh, curative and palliative purposes. And again, this is done as a one session only. And you can see the treatment improvement for this uh, case where we have a tumor. And then in, in one session of SRS, the tumor has, has been gone. Uh, Combi CT uh, integrating imaging systems based on kilo voltage uh, Combi CT, which attaching you know a an X-ray tube to the LINAC, and this is also a good uh, technology that uh, seeing is believing. Uh, tomotherapy machines also integrating uh, IGRT and IMRT in adaptive radiation therapy treatment. Uh, you have the cyber knife, which has a robotic arm and has a, a very, uh, uh, has a LINAC inside, a LINAC in the head and a, a treatment couch that moves in a six degrees of freedom in different directions so that the tumor will be attacked from different angles. Uh, you have intraoperative radiation therapy machines, which were, uh, this is used, uh, you know, during surgery. For example, if a patient uh, has a tumor, after removing surgically the tumor, this machine could be incorporated in the OR, where a, a, a special applicator will be inserted to treat the uh, uh, the tumor bed, as we say. So any residual uh, cancer cells will be targeted at this point. Uh, we have now the MR LINAC, again, integrating the uh, uh, MRI imaging modality into the LINAX for the better viewing and adaptive treatment. And in this uh, adaptive, uh, the, the physicist has a, you know, a uh, enormous responsibility in uh, doing this optimization on a daily basis after you know images has been taken onto the patient. So the physicist will adapt the contours according to the a new uh, imaging uh, criteria. Again, proton therapy, now many centers around the world uh, used to be proton therapy is very limited. And now because of the uh, you know uh, advanced technology in cyclotron, now you do not have, you don't need to have a, a big or, or a, a, like a, a big space to uh, have a proton therapy facility. Now you have a compact cyclotrons, small compact that can be fit in, in a, like in a, a large room instead of you need like a cycling, a, a large area to have the proton uh, acceleration. For this now, many countries are adapting the proton therapy, and you can know that the proton therapy has a significant clinical advantage over conventional radiation therapy, and this is due to the uh, BRAC peak. You can see here that the BRAC peak, you can um, uh, 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 you can manage to uh, calculate or to promote to get the tumor that you want according to the, uh, you know, the tumor uh, depth. So this, after that, the, the tumor will receive the whole radiation and the exit radiation will be minimally, uh, you know, uh, almost nothing after the uh, depth of the tumor. Again, this is the uh, uh, machine, the proton therapy machine, where you can uh, have, this is the cyclotron behind the room and the, uh, the proton therapy will be delivered, you know, to the patient sitting on the table. Uh, this, uh, the uh, other radiation therapy modality is the brachytherapy. Brachytherapy, which is, uh, you know, treatment in, uh, in a distant and using radioactive materials. We have many types of implants in brachytherapy treatment, intercavitary, interstitial, surface plate, intraluminal, intraoperative, intravascular. And just to give you a, a small snapshots of these different modalities and examples. Here, intracavitary, so you enter uh, intracavitary uh, brachytherapy using applicators like uh, ring and tandem and, uh, you know, different uh, you know, applicators that could be used, especially for GYN uh, cases. 
and these will be attached to a radioactive uh, element, usually a radium, uh, through a, a HDR machine, and the radiation will be given to the uh, you know patients, uh, and then the uh, radioactive will be retracted to the machine. Uh, another intracavitary is the radiation therapy for the breast is the mammocyte, which is used as a balloon and applicator, used to be inserted inside a cavity where the tumor bed was. And this is done only uh, uh, you know, uh, in five sessions. Uh, interstitial HDR, which is an invasive procedure where the multi-catheters will be inserted into the tumor and then the radiation sources will go through these applicators and deliver the treatment accordingly. The intraluminal brachytherapy, which uses the uh, lumen, or uh, for example, here is the bronchus esophagus, and these use uh, also applicators, small tube applicators that goes to the tumor area and give deliver the dose. The intravascular, uh, from its name, it's also used to treat some vascular diseases and also insert these uh, applicators into uh, vessels and veins. Uh, the surface molds and flakes, putting uh, like, for example, this uh, mold placed on the surface target, either in, on the skin or example on the eye. This is another treatment of the surface using, uh, you know, treating some melanoma of, uh, of the eyes using a iodine plaque, which will deliver the tumor, uh, the, the treatment or the radiation dose to the uh, tumor area. And these are uh, all attached to this HDR high dose rate machine, which has the radioactive source in it. This is an example. So the, all the applicators will be attached to this end where the radiation source will come up uh, by a wire and goes, uh, you know, inside the, the patient through the applicators, different applicators. Uh, you have seed implants. Uh, this is uh, another uh, new techniques that you can put or uh, implant seeds into the, uh, the patients. And the seeds is uh, usually iodine or palladium, and they deliver the dose to the patient and kill the uh, tumor cells. This is an example of a prostate seed implant. And you can see these uh, the, the, after we can take uh, a photo of the, of the uh, patient and we can count the seeds so that to make sure all the seeds are uh, counted inside the body. And uh, uh, the patients could go after the surgery, and, uh, but there were some precautions, radiation safety precautions to follow. Uh, this is uh, the 3D where we can put all the seeds in the prostate and, you know, sparing the uh, bladder and the rectum. So the patients in this case would have minimal, you know, side effects. Uh, again, Gamma Knife is a, is a machine that is also used for the radiosurgery treatment using radioactive uh, uh, sources. Some of them, they have 90 or 180 radioactive sources. And this is a treatment for the brain tumor. So all of these uh, examples, they are uh, uh, depicting a high quality healthcare services and they, they, they need these three pillars, the advanced technology, you need a qualified personnel, you need the driver to do that. And this is uh, most of the time a medical physicist with a qualified uh, you know, uh, criteria and competent to deliver the, uh, the treatment or the diagnosis uh, to the uh, the high quality standards, and you need also intellectual systems. You need, uh, you know, uh, uh, softwares, and you need uh, networking of these collaborative systems. The, the uh, radiation treatment, the modalities of uh, these machines with, you know, imaging modalities. So all this will provide a complete pathways of sustainable healthcare. Again, these are the main eight elements of a medical physicist. If you are thinking of a becoming of a medical physicist or you, uh, uh, you already a medical physicist, you should be able to do at least these eight innovative and um, be adhering to these criteria, which we put it in our theme for this year as medical physics for sustainable healthcare. And by this, I would like to uh, end up my uh, presentation from a Madame Curie, the 
the uh, lady who worked with radioactive materials and um, uh, actually medical physics uh, day is being depicted after her birthplace in November 7, that's we are celebrating today. And she says one time, nothing in life is to be feared, it is to be understood. So as students uh, and medical physics, we have to understand you know, the machines, how it works. We have to understand the, the process in order to implement it in the best of our knowledge and expertise for the better and for the better health and well-being of the patients. I would wish you happy uh, Medical Physics Day to everyone. And I hope that I uh, convey the message of uh, to all of you that medical physics is a profession, is also a, 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 a passion to help patients uh, for the better health. Thank you very much. And um, I wish you all happy Medical Physics Day. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Ibrahim. Now, if there are any comments, you can either type in the chat box or you can unmute yourself and uh, talk to the uh, talk directly to the presenter. Assalamualaikum, sir. Uh, thank you very much for your time, and uh, we are quite quite happy to have you. It's a uh, happy you. IDMP for all of us. Yeah. Thank you very much. And uh, thank you for giving me this opportunity to uh, talk to you and to the uh, people in Pakistan and worldwide. And I have another uh, presentations to, uh, to, to uh, give. And I will see you probably next year. Thank you all. Mm-hmm.